Our breaking news in college football, Florida State will be hiring Memphis head football coach Mike Norvell, the 38-year-old, spent four years at Memphis. This coming off Memphis's first outright conference title since 1969. They will be in a New Year's Six game going to the Cotton Bowl after beating Cincinnati. So Florida State replacing Willie Taggart after 21 games, which he went 9-12. Two years into his six-year contract worth $30 million, and now it's Mike Norvell, the Memphis head coach, to take over the Seminoles. We start with Brian McFadden, the former Florida State defensive back, for your thoughts. You like it? Uh, I guess to be determined. Uh, <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because the last coach and hire didn't go accordingly. And I think seeing exactly what was out there and hearing Bob Snoop's, uh, Stoops' name associated with Florida State and some other names, James Franklin, and things like that, and that didn't work out, and now getting Mike Norvell, granted, he did a, a real good job. But the concerns that I have about Norvell is recruiting. The state of Florida, that's a hotbed, not just for in-state schools, schools surrounding the state, SEC powerhouses like Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Auburn. And looking at what Florida has been able to do, I mean, you have to find a way to recruit the state and do, do it well and be consistent in doing so. So I don't know exactly the relationship that he already has in place with some of the elite players in the state, not to mention some of the high school coaches that have been doing a real good job year in and year out and having those relationships already established to be able to walk into these homes, walk through the, the, through the uh, hallways, and these kids recognize and know what you bring to the, to the table. And, and, and that's why I said to be determined, because for you to be successful in college football, you have to be successful in recruiting. So Barton, for all things recruiting, we head to you. How will Mike Norvell fare at Florida State on the recruiting side? All right, BMAC, I'm going to talk you into this. Uh, this is a great hire. And, and, and this is a great hire because of, of a lot of reasons. And, and I'll get to recruiting, but I'll start here. I mean, this is a coach that comes in, a, a first-round pick out the door. Riley Ferguson is quarterback. Brady White is quarterback. Neither of those guys are going to be NFL draft picks. Uh, he has built a, a roster. He has elevated a program. He is a CEO. He's a guy that, that, that is, is, he is the mind behind that offense. He isn't hiring that out. Uh, this is a guy that is, is behind the offense. He, he is the face of the program in terms of the way he hires coaches, in terms of the way he develops those coaches. You see all these guys leaving the building and heading to other programs as offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator for Georgia tonight, is a former Memphis coach. There's a reason that he develops all these coaches to have so much success outside his walls. And, and finally, in recruiting, he's done an outstanding job. He is atop the AAC in the recruiting rankings yearly. And Memphis is not the easiest place to recruit, too. There's a lot of places you can hit, but you're not at UCF. You're not at South Florida. Uh, and, and I think that because he is a very energetic, a, a very all-encompassing CEO in the same way you hear about the James Franklins of the world, guys that are very on top of it, like he is a coach that's going to be front-facing as a recruiter, so I really believe in this hire. I think it's a good one. Look, I'm in Nashville, so maybe the proximity here has given me a little bit of insight or maybe a little bit of bias even. But I think that Mike Norvell is going to do an outstanding job. He's got to certainly position his staff to be able to attack Florida. Um, and, and, and there's going to take some hires and, and maybe some, uh, some different personnel than he has with them at Memphis. Uh, but regardless of all that, I, I think he's going to be a really successful coach there and elevate that program in the same way he continues to elevate Memphis. I even saw BMAC smile a little bit and nod his head just a little bit. He nodded his head more than he shook his head during that answer, Barton. Chip, last word on this. Mike Norvell has a chance to be able to get Florida State to the point where it can at least be winning 10 or 11 games a year. But that's not going to be good enough for Florida State. The challenge for Mike Norvell is closing the gap with Clemson. And the problem is Clemson's not just at the top of the ACC. Clemson's at the top of all the college football. So this is going to have to come in steps. And that's why I would say for Florida State fans, there's going to have to be some patience. It's not going to be instant. It's going to take a couple of cycles. It's going to take 
a couple of seasons to be able to, you know, win small before you win big because there's a lot of gap between where Florida State is right now and where the Clemson Tigers are. And if we're going to measure Mike Norvell's success by where he stands against Dabo Sweeney, then he's going to fail if you're only going to give him about two years. You've got to give Mike Norvell some time, and he can very quickly get you to the point where Florida State's winning 10 games a year, contending for a New Year's Six Bowl. But Florida State fans want to see Florida State contending for national championships, and that means closing the gap with Clemson, and that's going to take more than just two years. Got to be better than the 9-12 and 12 in the first two years of Willie Taggart. Fellas, thank you.